we are talking about 30 years. Where were we 30 years ago? I was signing my first contract with oil and gas service company. And when Martin contacted me a few days back uh, concerning to be actively participating to this gathering, we worked together a bit on the thematic and the presentation. But I wanted to share you what made me 17, 18, 20 years after being here today. So I'm going to present you a case study that happened to me during a management role. So I'm French, I'm Canadian, I'm permanent resident Singaporean, and I gathered all these skills over the time of for crossing around 40 countries, five continents. I dropped my son in Singapore, I dropped my daughter in Canada, where they are uh, active or student and active. And the key, the spark that started growing up over years that brought me here, and thank you, Dr. Modwell, to have made this possible during our first meeting uh, a year ago. So I will get the... Yes, thank you. So what I want to come up with this case study is to go from Canada. So I'm going to bring you to a journey in Alberta, Canada, the west side, the one, the one that goes minus 30, minus 40 during winter. And at the time, I was uh, in charge of gathering two teams, two technical teams, from an acquisition of a company from a joint venture of company A and B. I will not mention the company because I don't have asked, didn't have the time to have the authorization to mention them. So we are in a situation where we have two technical teams in a very hard environment, as well as technical. Uh, the weather is difficult. We were drilling around 1,200 wells a year. We had a team of uh, 10, 15 person. And in this team, we had one person that really didn't like it. The fact that me as a French, becoming Canadian later, but me as a friend taking ownership of both technical team. So, when I arrived in 1997 in Canada, the first things that I was told is we are not a social club. So that statement was already made and we were more focusing on results as it was presented before. Results, results, client, money, finance, turnover. In 2000, when this joint venture of these two companies, A and B, happened, uh, the new statement of the CEO, and that was the company statement, we commit, we deliver, no excuses. So not much of a human statement there. It was results, results, results. So even though we went through an acquisition, we still have the mindset of results, of finance figures, of quantity. So this is me here. I was probably 200 kilometers away from Alaska border on the north of Alberta. And that's what we call helmet. And this bridge is special because this is the only rig where you can go to helmet area where you can drill because you need to wait for winter for the ground to freeze in order to get the rigs moving. So in six months, we were making the majority of our activities. And that's what a drilling rig looks like. So you have the derrick, you have the pipe, and you're doing a hole that will go between three to 5,000 meters. So that's the environment where we have, and each and every hole drilled, we had 1,200 per year of this hole done. So you can imagine the path and the, 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 the speed of which we had to go through. And over my team back in uh, Alberta, I had one little element that couldn't cope up with this change. So he was very good at what he was doing. He was part of the B company. He had spent many years of grasping his technology environment, specific environment of activities. And this person was one of the key technologists, which is a, a Canadian term for half technicians, half engineers. So they, they love this term technologist, make them feel better. So he was one of my best technologists at the time, but he would not cope up with the fact that we grouped the two teams together and come to one entity. 
So after a few years, I used my best management skill to put the team together, get to the point, deliver client satisfaction, ISO in place, ERP, all the, the full spectrum, and it was working. We managed to get from 5% of the market in Canada to 35% in a few years. 500 million income. The EBIT was going to the roof. You cannot share. It's a bit confidential, but it was a two-digit plus plus. So everybody was happy, but I was not. Because one of the elements that I had in my group was breaking the change. Completely reluctant to any weekly meeting we would do. I used all my skill that I had at the time, and I was exhausted. I spent nights thinking about this guy. What should I do? And at one point, the general manager and the director and the HR manager called me an afternoon. Laurent, come to my office now. And what they did, they gave me 10 seconds. You have 10 seconds to choose if this guy is to be kept in the organization or not. 10 seconds to take everything I knew about him, everything I knew about my management skills as a French-Canadian arrival, and to be able to decide of the life of the guy. And I know if we had been managers, we all go through these moments where we have to decide to keep a person or not. This is a, probably one of the most difficult things to do, but it has to be done. Because at the end of the day, we commit, we deliver, no excuses. So if I may ask you by raising your hand, what would you do with such person? He is a key person in one of the several technology we have. He has been in the company before me. I'm the guest. He was there first. And I have to choose if he has to be and stay in the team or not. Who would fire him? Raise your hand. One. OK. I was close to. Who would keep him? Majority. And the rest, I think, are still sleeping, waking up. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, yes, I kept him. But I was tempted, honestly. No bother. Keep him out, take another one, train him, boom, done, fix. And I was close to do it. But I kept him. Why? I kept him, why? Um, because the proposal of the solution that the HR manager, Rene was her name, uh, proposed me, say, Laurent, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a strategy to bring him back on track. We're going to hire a psychologist. He's going to stay confidential. I don't want to know what they are talking about, but this guy, we're going to brief him back and making him a 180 flip. And it worked. We invested $6,000. I had to let the guy go several days a week to go meet his psychologist. Well, I could manage that part. The program must work. We had a meeting with him, say, listen, if you don't go, if you fail, at the end of the day, you're out. So it's up to you to commit, to deliver, and don't have excuses. And the confidentiality information and ethical approach, very, very sensitive topic in Canada, a bit less in France. Since I came back in 2012, I can see that we can push that a bit further. But the confidentiality is a big, big information matter in, in North America. So this is the summary that took me 17 years to dissect of these 10 seconds. What came to my mind at the time? And the conclusion could have been like yours, let him go. But what came to my mind is timing and return on investment that today we put names on. What is the return on investment to invest into HR structure? Is it a finance matter? I don't think so. What was Important is the not to be impossible to manage. When you are exhausted with a relationship, it doesn't mean the person A or B are bad or good. It's not a statement of value measurement. It's, it's the fact that they are incompatible. Vinegar and oil cannot mix, doesn't work. Major action to put in place if we came in. And we did. But look at the number of years that many years after I estimated to invest to replace the person and come back to a plug and play. Here, it was quicker. Don't forget that we are in a very growing environment. 
Uh, Nate is a wonderful university, but they only produce as many technologies per year. And having a person to get in, 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 on board needed all my energy and French style to show the adventure to be able to grasp them and put them on board. So there was a lot of point that I didn't like to go on the layoff. I would have slid better if I did. But we started a six months journey with him. What happened next? Then it worked. First time that we had to change the behavior through training, third help, third party help, but the behavior changed. And it changed even more than work attitude. And that's where I started to feel that as a manager, I had a social role. Two years after, he came back to me and said, Laurent, I introduce you my girlfriend, and I invite you to my wedding. And during the day of the wedding, when we came out of the Serbian church, he said that. It was the hardest things that I've ever done in my life, but it's the best things that happened to me. So that's a study case that is pretty standard and can be in any management environment where you have to think about the future of one employee that doesn't behave. Alignment, synergy, we don't peg it all at the same direction. So it highlights three questions. So can this issue could have been avoided by continuous behavior measurement? At the time, big data didn't exist. But can today, with what Google, Facebook, or Microsoft are doing, could we grasp on any data and be able to capture this behavior and avoid to come to a situation of blockage, or at least to take corrective action? Can we anticipate by having this type of capture of data uh, a management dashboard that would say, are my guys happy? Are they committed? Are they involved in the company goals and objectives? Well, we just said it was only 35% of the structure that do that. So that's been 65% of what you invest on people today are just ongoing process. Second question that I, I would say matured like a long wine is does HR return on investment are always represent, represented in finance figure? And I would say no because of time purpose. Finance needs quarterly review, year review, Yearly review with employees, we put the stamp in, they have their bonus, they have their share, next. But human beings evaluate on a day basis. We just saw that in six months' time, we were able to change one person. And half was changed in 10 seconds. How to align all this time management of measure, capture? That's a question, and because we are here to raise questions, I don't have the answer yet. HR return on investment has a different time frame. So the budget, the return long term, try to gather these guys together, they all have their DNA, how to interconnect together. That's why I spent the last 17 years to try to gather this key point of what I call a DNA of a person. I'm not the only one. I just started EDBA session three a few weeks back. And when I started to go into the literature, I can find trillions of articles in this direction. So first, it comfort me that my single analysis and try to make this kind of academic, and I'm here for that, uh, that's the type of key we can see. We can take a few examples. Time factor, we find it again. The psychological factor. What is a psychological factor? It's something that we put two excellent person together and it may work, or it may not. Sometimes you put the best of the best together, you create a team, and at the end, the results flop. Why? So that will remain a question. Alignment DNA, commitment. We just mentioned that, Martin, right? If people are not committed, then how to succeed? What would make people work 100 hours a week in order to, it's forbidden in France, sorry. But in Canada, it was not. And I've been through that, where you can be 100 hours committed to a mission. It's not work anymore. It's patient. It's commitment. One of the companies that I started to get in touch with is uh, 
Gympass. It's a company that is <coughs> all over the world in Paris, but also in Brazil. And they will gather sort of team building aspect with sport. And they had, uh, you can find that on internet, they had a seminar yesterday about return on investment in HR by doing external activities. And their definition of the return on investment on HR is the benefit by the investment, time 100 for a scale factor. And I think so, but we could converse a bit more of what an investment is. It is to lay off the guy, or is it to invest $6,000 that the finance guy will tell you, you're wasting money, just fire him now. Why are you wasting your time and money? There's no return on that. There is. Not only there is for the company, because when you have a case like that, it glows. It shows to others your management skills. It shows that your door is open and you can treat any problem at any given time in an open way. And it will do snowball. It will create a momentum. And it will create what is, for me, the most fundamental in your management situation, trust. We don't trust companies today. I just come from a big company where we were 150,000 people. The trust was not there. The commitment was there for a career, for a family purpose, for finance purpose. But at the end of the day, is it really commitment or personal interest? And the big difference between the two. So that's why after many, many years since this event, which was around 2000, and after looking for several uh, school, EDBAs, MBAs, and so on, I stopped after I met uh, Ecole des Ponts team. I'm here, and I start my journey today. I don't finish it. I start a journey where all the questions that I just presented, and that's the formula I have at the beginning of the journey, and I'm happy today to share it with you because this is what made me be here. And the next three years, I hope less to finish it, but maybe the next 15 years will be a subject of my interest. And I want to get there into sharing, maybe professor at one point, why not? Let's dream. Huh? We have to aim the stars to reach the clouds. So HR return on investment for me has an investment statement and we can develop this investment. What type of investment? It's not finance. Get out of the finance version of things, but what type of investment? The structure of behavior, how the entire group will do. Is it an analysis for one person or for a group or for a company? I think the same parallel of analysis can be done for all of these environments. We can analyze the DNA of a person, but we can also analyze the DNA of a department. We can also analyze the DNA of a company. I had many CEOs when I had managing suppliers or manufacturers that would have this DNA, the identity of the company, and that will flow down to the organization. Time. I already mentioned the time concept. Do we want to measure? Nyquist said to measure a uh, a variable, you need to sample it at the minimum of two times the maximum frequency of this decomposition. How are we frequently measuring the behavior of people? What are we getting? On a yearly basis, it doesn't work. And already big companies are running away from this yearly analysis and uh, review. DNA already explained. So. That's pretty much the question that I will leave with you, and I don't have the answer today, and I don't pretend to ever have the answer. But what I can say is in the next years to come, I'm going to dig into it, I'm going to meet people about it, I'm going to bring my little humble stone in this wall, and I want to spend the next 15, maybe 20, if I have a longer life than expected, uh, spend time on that, okay? So the takeaway that I will give you, blooming is a term that use, I use a lot for the last five years. Blooming somebody, trying to make them open arms and get all the mindset of an individual or a structure. And I'm convinced it can be applied to a structure by blooming its synergy. You gather people, will create a return on investment greater than expected. 
It's not a linear process. It's not I give one, I get two. It's exponential because it snowballs. So that will conclude my little introduction and all the questions that I share with you. Uh, I just found that recently, the great teacher inspires. And I think I'm at the right place because there is a lot of great teachers here. Thank you. Thank you.